Knock Off is the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie where he took on his greatest challenge and finally showed the world he can do anything. Even carry a movie with Rob Schneider as the co-star. Move it! You gotta want it! We start off with Van Damme doing what he does best. Being awesome. This is exactly what I imagine Van Damme does whenever he's not exploding people's f***ing souls with spin kicks. He gives his BMW to a forklift operator because he appreciates blue collar workers and I swear to God, if you don't love JCVD, then you can eat sh now we get Rob Schneider. At 8 o'clock, we had a tax meeting. At 10.30, we had a fashion show. And I swear to God, I would rather sit through that f***ing tax meeting than listen to whatever the hell he's rambling about. It is shit. <laughs> to make up for that, we get to experience being Van Damme's kicking foot. And it's God Van Damme glorious. Now we're introduced to this guy, who's Van Damme's brother, so you know he's f***. But who cares? We're not here for him. We're here for this. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. What follows is a rickshaw race so epic, it makes Ben Hur look like a potato sack race between your IT department. <laughs> Even though we all know Van Damme can walk on water, he blows us away with his versatility by running down stairs. Style on the side of cars, even through a f***ing fish market. His shoes can't even believe that sh and spontaneously explode. Since the other racers are only human and rickshaw races are no f***ing joke, they all crash and die horrifically. Everything's going awesomely when Rob Schneider tries to ruin it by whipping Van Damme with an eel. Move that big beautiful ass of yours! <laughs> but he's Van Damme, and if he can carry Dennis Rodman, Cybermugs, I'm pretty sure he can carry you. While winning the rickshaw race and preventing Schneider from ruining the movie, Van Damme still finds time to save some lives, and after witnessing a kidnapping, he catches up to a van in his fucking rickshaw and punches the driver so hard, the van goes flying into a fucking grocery store. Now he's in a race against time to annihilate everyone as fast as possible. Before Rob Schneider shows up and ruins everything. She's a cop! Now they're at the police station and everyone knows they have no jurisdiction over JCVD, so they show them zero respect. Maybe he wasn't that intelligent. <laughs> and even the camera says, fuck this, and goes to the next room to hang out inside a computer monitor. After that perfectly normal shit, they go back to work to find out they sent this bitch from corporate who's a total buzzkill. Inspector's report, check it against your own shipping manifest. Look, lady, we're not watching a Van Damme movie to hear about fucking shipping manifests. You didn't convert from Hong Kong dollars to US dollars. And how the hell are you nine feet tall? What the fuck is even happening? Right when the movie starts losing you, it pulls you back in by giving you the greatest shot of Rob Schneider taking a piss from inside a wall that you'll ever see. Chief's upset with you about this. You made a spectacle of yourself. And it's everything you hoped it would be. Then, when he suddenly vanishes, Van Damme tracks him down. And after wrecking this businessman on a smoke break, we get the mind-blowing twist that Schneider is actually CIA. We're CIA! And holy fuck! Oh, nice. I wouldn't want to be Rob Schneider right now. You lied to me! 
But then again, nobody ever would. You're the king of knockoffs. He's the king of a lot of things, dickface. I was, but you're still a fake. If you're not a heaping mess right now, then you might be Rob Schneider's career, cause you're already dead. Later that night, Van Damme's minding his own business, trying not to catch whatever the fuck this guy has, <coughs> when a truck just blows through a warehouse door and the entire fucking place explodes for no reason. If you're wondering what that means, it means he's gonna go Jean-Claude Van Ham all over these poor motherfuckers for ruining his dinner. The first gets his head bashed in awesomely with a giant kite. The second gets fucking no scoped. While the third gets a spin kick so hard that he goes flying through the air before being impaled on a spike. But let's be real, he was dead the second that kick landed. Now we find out Van Damme's brother stole millions from their business. Four million two hundred thousand dollars. And implicated them in a massive federal fraud investigation. Ray's gonna get plenty of rest in prison. And so will you. To apologize for that, he sends Van Damme a pineapple. It's a message from Eddie. Unfortunately, Van Damme's been having a shitty week with the whole shoe exploding thing and is in no fucking mood. Do you know what you did? Thankfully, they make up and it looks like Van Damme's brother's gonna be just fine. Oh, what the fuck? Now these guys come in with just the worst timing. Look, heads. Van Damme's brother just died the most ridiculous way possible, and you really don't want to fuck with him right now. Do whatever you want to Schneider. Nobody gives a shit. Oh, fuck. Now Van Damme's half machine. And you guys are full fucked. He goes full Van Damme against Skywalker on these poor sons of bitches. After completely wrecking half the population of Hong Kong, he shows how badass he is and is the only one that could make a getaway on this little scooter look fucking awesome. At this point, you could probably use a breather. I'm gonna find a place around here to collapse. But go fuck yourself, because we immediately get more Van Damme delivering spin kicks so hard they send motherfuckers back in time. <laughs> when he finds out North Korea's missile program is further along than we all thought, and Kim Jong Un is responsible for his brother's death. You were with him when he was executed. What did you say? Executed? He actually tries to run away, which is both adorable and hilarious. Van Damme is able to hold back the laughter and catches him immediately. <laughs> he then manages to get in a quick round of human bowling, where he gets a fucking strike, <laughs> then leaves the parking garage the most Van Damme way possible, flying out of the second level, <laughs> then just drives away like that's normal sh And for Van Damme, it is. You bastard. Devastated by his brother's death, he drives with Kim Jong Un all the way to Thailand, and suddenly, he forgets why he was ever sad in the first place. This scene took the world by storm and won Oscars, Golden Globes, Emmys, Grammys, Pulitzers, Nobel Prizes, a Heisman, and the presidency of Indonesia. It was the most powerful eight and a half hours the world has ever experienced. 
Afterwards, Van Damme went to make amends with Kim Jong-un, who was tied up in the car, but had long ago died of carbon monoxide poisoning. But it was so worth it. While Van Damme was busy being awesome, Schneider was getting the shit kicked out of him by a house cat. It turns out she's CIA too. It's good. Also, Buddha explodes. But anyways. You can't go like that. You gotta change. Look, you stuck up bitch. I don't even know where you guys are going, but he's Van Damme. He's probably going to kill 30 or 40 people and be shirtless by the end anyways. So go fuck yourself. Okay, fine. He'll change. But only because there's a bomb in his pants. Not because you said so. While Van Damme's giving the world what it wants more than anything, these morons get taken hostage by clearance rack Tim Roth and Brad Pitt. I have no idea why they do that. Because they don't want anything from them. They took them prisoner so they can kill them somewhere else in a really weird way. Maybe you will drink this. Like a fucking Bond villain. Baby. They're also super dramatic about it. I open your mouth. I open it wide open this time. Which gives the CIA boss time to show up and save them. Except it turns out he's one of the bad guys. You're giving the cigar to the wrong guy, Harry. You're probably wondering what the fuck that's all about. Entrepreneurship, baby cakes. But let's be honest. Would you rather hear some boring ass story from this stupid old fuck? <laughs> or watch Van Damme completely destroy everything we know about gravity and slaughter everyone <laughs> while turning the entire ship into a giant fucking slip and slide. <laughs> he even stops sliding, then magically starts again. It wasn't edited that way. Van Damme couldn't really do that. He also pulls the trigger so hard that everyone he shoots goes fucking flying. <laughs> now he begins toying with them. When he knocks this guy out, then starts playing hacky sack with his fucking gun. <laughs> oh, Van Damme, we don't deserve you. <laughs> he then has a climactic fight against a guy they call the Tickler. He's been seen throughout the entire movie doing nothing but coughing. Killed you. Both of your screw-ups, Volkov. <coughs> and it somehow gets weirder. After his cat hands move doesn't work, and he has another coughing fit, he busts out his secret weapon, his fucking glasses, whose lenses are sharper than sh they damn near decapitate this guy. Van Damme realizes this is the weirdest shit he's been in since Monaco forever. Okay. But he's Van Damme and you're not. <laughs> when he finally gets bored of playing human bottle flip, he spin kicks a goddamn shipping container that completely crushes Mr. Tickler. <laughs> because Van Damme doesn't do anything half-assed. Now Van Damme says get the f out of my movie oh. and crushes has Benjamin Button with a giant anchor. I'm not sure why he's taking his shirt off, but one, I told you that was gonna happen, and two, nobody's complaining. Anyways, she has pants bombs too, and throws them at crooked CIA guy, which makes a lot of things blow the fuck up. And makes everything else awesome. Now it's two hours later, and I'm just going to ignore whatever this is. 
and whatever stupid sh Schneider's talking about. I'm talking a jacuzzi. Sprinkles just a bit. But how the hell is this guy still alive? We just saw him blow up. You know what? I blame Rob Schneider. <laughs> that guy. Not 